Okay, so interpreting the results. The Anderson-Darling test statistics. So this is that first value we calculate. Uh, what we know about that is that higher values correspond to lower probability that the data originated from the specified distribution. So higher AD test statistic corresponds to a lower p-value. All right, awesome. So then what's the p-value? Well, generally we use a critical value to evaluate this p-value. And we use that critical value to determine if we fail to reject the null hypothesis or if we do reject the null hypothesis. In most cases, that p-value is going to be a 0 0.05. So if you know anything about p-values, you'll be great in this. Um, as engineers, we tend to have a tough time with p-values. Um, because we think of them as pass or fail, um, you know, where if you're above 0 0.05, it's a pass. If you're below, it's a fail. We really don't like to use that, um, especially when talking in statistics. That can work in a, in a scenario. We can say, oh, we failed for normality because our p-value was less than 0 0.05. But just remember that the if you're above the critical value, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, above the critical, fail to reject. If we are below, we do reject. So I'm going to step away from statistics and talk like an engineer for a second. 0 0.05, I mean, sorry, not 0 0.05. If we're greater than our p-value, then we accept. Now, you can't say this, but as an engineer, I'm going to talk to engineers here. If we're above our critical, then we can assume and accept the null hypothesis. That is not a statistical statement. That is an engineering statement. We can accept that it's most likely true. Okay, So we can go along with the null hypothesis. If it's below the critical, then we go along with the alternative hypothesis. Again, that is not a statistician statement. That is an engineer's statement. Okay, Above p-value, I mean above critical value, null hypothesis. Below, alternative. Again, not a, st a statistician statement. That's an engineer's statement. Okay, so let's do an example here. We have a p-value of 0 0.08 and a critical value of 0 0.05. Our p-value is greater than or equal to the critical value, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. In this case, the null hypothesis for the Anderson-Darling test is that the data follow the specified distribution. Therefore, we assume that the data follow the specified distribution. Okay, p-value greater than or equal to critical value, we can assume the data follow the specified distribution. Here's another example. We have a p-value of 0 0.03. Our critical value is 0 0.05. Our p is less than our critical, therefore we reject the null hypothesis. So therefore, we cannot assume the data follow the specified distribution p-value less than the critical, we cannot assume the data follow the specified distribution for the Anderson-Darling test. Remember, these, this null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis only apply to the Anderson-Darling goodness of fit test. Okay, but something I want to clarify for all of us engineers out there. Again, we're stepping away from statistics and we're talking as engineers because the whole goal of these videos is to give you as an engineer the ability to talk with your customer and explain so that nothing comes as a surprise to you or them. So let's say you have a p-value of 0.08 and a p-value of 0.8, right? Both of those values are greater than or equal to our critical value of 0.05. In both cases, we fail to reject the null hypothesis and therefore we assume that the data follow the specified distribution. Your customer is going to be a lot happier and you will be a lot happier with the p-value of 0.8 as opposed to the 0 0.08 because even though they both pass one of them is a much safer pass to put it in terms that an engineer generally is more familiar with let's talk capability a capability of 1.34 or even 1.33 passes but if you have a capability of 7.88 you feel really good chances are you're a little worried that we messed something up because that's an incredibly high capability. But you have to remember that even though it's a pass-fail test, it's a hypothesis test, as an engineer we can say it's a pass-fail test, we also feel much more comfortable with a higher p-value because that gives us much more confidence. Again, as engineers, it gives us much more confidence that the data follow the distribution. Okay.
Again, we're talking as engineers here, not as statisticians. I like to, to specify that because mathematicians and statisticians really hate when us engineers take shortcuts. But we live in the real world with real limitations, and we have to do the best with what we have.